Good afternoon, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's Thursday, March 1st, 2007, and uh, the market's closed with uh, losses once again, but uh, very small, especially relative to where they opened. Um, early on, we saw the market gap down. The NASDAQ, the Qs, were down about 2% right away on the open. And um, I don't mean to switch markets on you, but I can't get a quote for some reason or my charts aren't working on the NASDAQ 100, the Qs. So let's take a look at the uh, composite here instead. And basically this level that I'm just drawing in right now, that's at about 23.95 or so, um, is, is basically the equivalent to the $43 level that we've been looking at in the, uh, in the Qs. And the Qs closed at uh, 43.13 uh, is what it looks like. Um, right now, but this 43 do, uh, 43 level, and I'm referring to right now is you know to just think 43, but we're looking at 23.95 on the Q, on the composite rather. Uh, but that level is the obvious level of support, and what we need to see happen in a bottom a lot of times is that you get that first flush uh, flush out, and then like I said in an earlier post today, last night on the NBC nightly news, I heard them talking about well it looks like the worst is over, and I was telling my kids that. You know, that's exactly what we need because the public feels as though, hey, you know, they did a good job buying yesterday. But then when they see the market opening lower like it did this morning, they panic, they capitulate. And that's typically the time when we get that lower volume test. And today was lower volume than it was two days ago. Um, that's when the buyers come in. And that's where I came in today, fortunately, and, and was able to, to, to make some nice purchases. But it, the important thing is that it closed back up above that obvious level. What's obvious in the market is often obviously wrong. That's uh, Joel Granville that said that quote. Um, but that 43, you know, breaking that $43 level was something that a lot of people were looking at thinking, oh, that's the end of the world. And a lot of times you just need to take out that obvious level and hit those stops down there and get the weak last, hold, last of the weak holders out of the market. Uh, before the market is in a condition where it can turn around. Now, I think maybe tomorrow we get kind of a quiet day, but I think that uh, I think you want to start thinking an upward bias here over the next week or so, probably up towards this 2450 level, up towards that 50-day uh, moving average right in there on the NASDAQ composite. We'll take a look at the Qs uh, tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have those fixed. Um, but I think that we're going to start to see a rally in there. Now, it doesn't mean that you ought to rush out and buy everything because I think that it's going to be – um, probably a pretty quick rally. We'll see it happen on diminishing volume. And then we were just kind of in an overall indecisive area for the market. And with that gap lower like that, it, a lot of times it could signal uh, what's known as a breakaway gap, meaning that uh, we've got a lot more downside to come. I don't want to make that prediction, like I said. Let's just play it a couple days at a time and try and anticipate what might happen next, which would be, uh, rally up towards that 24.50. Let's take a look at the 10-minute time frame in here and see what we have. You can see that we've still got these longer-term moving averages, in particular that five-day moving average, still declining. So that's telling us don't get aggressive on the long side. Um, you know, there was an opportunity for a great trade early this morning, but I think we need to chop around and uh, maybe heal a little bit more time-wise in here. Hopefully what can happen is that maybe this five-day moving average comes down and meets the market near about 2430, and then it can turn around, go up maybe towards that 2450, maybe even up towards the middle end of that range. We could uh, look for targets. You know, a lot of people are going to be doing this, I'm sure, is taking, let's take it from this high to, to that low there. So the 61.8% retracement would potentially bring it up towards about 2465. Uh, but the 50% retracement, right about 2446, uh, 2445. So I think in that 2450, 2445 area is where we have the best chance of going over the next week or so. But again, it's you know it's defense that wins the game. So I think uh, you want to look at some of these levels, like about you know the 2395 area, and think that uh, breaking below that could uh, be a reason to to get more defensive. Hopefully you took that trade early on. I mean, you don't want to be holding with these longer-term moving averages still declining. I still think there's a lot of risk in the market. Let's take a look at the S&P 500, look at the spiders, because I, I can get a chart on that, or at least I thought I could. Come on. Okay, here we go. So you can see that today's volume was less than what we saw on, on uh, Tuesday, so that's good uh, that uh, we didn't have as much panic. And, and you know, big volume means 
uh, there's big emotion in the market. So the emotional uh, aspect of the selling wasn't as strong today. And that kind of clears the way a lot of times for a recovery rally. And we saw the MACD diverge in here as well. And it looks like I'm not getting a good reading on that. So let's not talk about the MACD. Um, but what I was looking for was a divergence in there. And, and we saw the volume divergence, which is good to see, meaning that the volume came in today in here in these S&Ps on this one big candle here where we saw the uh, the rally unfold. So let's take a look at that on a 10-minute uh, time frame. You can see that, that we had this increasing volume on the way down. We were concerned yesterday because the volume relative to that on yesterday's so-called recovery was pretty light. And then we saw a big volume coming in here today. And it looks like it's holding on to these gains. So I think 140 is a pretty good area that if it breaks below, then then the selling's not uh, behind us. But it's it's looking more encouraging. If we take a look at the same type of Fibonacci up, taking this high from uh, the 22nd to today's lows, well, then we could maybe see 142.5 to 143.40 or so. And um, the 50-day moving average might be that area. So that's... Uh, uh, about 143 so I think that 143 looks obtainable maybe over the next uh, few sessions but we are in a very tricky environment here so just be very careful in this environment there, you know, th this type of trading is best left for people who have a lot of experience who are uh, very disciplined because it's an easy type of environment to lose a lot of money in quickly a lot of people look at it and say well look how much you could have made think of how much you could lose first and manage the risk and if you're not comfortable with it then you know take the day and go skiing like I did yesterday the semiconductors uh, same thing is yesterday nothing's really changed in here we've got this uh, range bound market and that's that's the only way you can look at it we're in the middle of this range bound market they were up a little bit today you could look at it and say well they touched the 200 day moving average and found support yeah, so what though it's still in the middle of a range the, uh, the short-term trend in here is uh, starting to maybe show a little bit of signs of consolidation, but we've still got, you know, we've got these lower highs, and then now we've got a higher uh, low, it looks like. So we want to play some importance near that $34 level. You don't want to be too too precise with your support and resistance levels in here because a lot of times what happens is it'll come down through that little 34 level just to shake people out a little bit further uh, before they turn it back around. So, again, it, it comes down to feel and experience a lot of times in this uh, type of environment. Um, that's the only charts that I have to look at because uh, I've got data problems with uh, my provider here. So uh, if I can get that figured out, maybe I'll have another video for you this evening. But I don't think I'm going to uh, come up with any new stock ideas for the week. And I think that's the right choice because there's just too much volatility in the market. That let's focus on the averages. And when th once things settle down a little bit, we can go back to some stock picking.